kijkt weer naar een nieuwe aflevering van My Search For Me. Alles wat te maken heeft met de zoektocht naar jezelf. En mijn naam is Sibel van Maar. In de afgelopen weken heb ik leuke, mooie interviews met jullie gedeeld. Uh, onder andere van uh, Tony Verheij, de liefdesgids. En uh, Karen Hogenboom van Volzicht. Mocht je dat gemist hebben, je kan altijd even teruggaan naar die video's, naar die interviews. Uh, maar in de aankomende video's ga ik een aantal uh, um, ja, interviews met jullie delen van ook weer hele mooie, inspirerende mensen. Maar deze keer is het in Engels. Ik ben namelijk uh, afgelopen zomer in Londen geweest. Daar heb ik een goede vriend van mij uh, opgezocht. Zijn naam is Arvind. Hij, heeft ook, hij is coach en hij heeft een heel bekend boek geschreven. Um, en uh, ja, hem heb ik ook geïnterviewd, dus dat interview komt er nog aan. Um, maar daarnaast heb ik ook nog een aantal andere mensen geïnterviewd. Um, ja, echt super inspirerend en mooi. En één van die personen was Kavit Harai. Uh, nou, Kavit komt dus uit uh, Engeland en uh, hij is een hele succesvol uh, internetondernemer en snapt alles van het vak internetondernemen. Um, dus in het eerste deel zal hij uh, eigenlijk één simpele vraag beantwoorden, simpel maar lang antwoord. Uh, van wie is Kabit en uh, hoe is hij gekomen tot waar hij nu staat. Um, en voor Kabit begon het eigenlijk allemaal met één passie en dat was muziek. Um, dus nou ja, Kabit is echt de man die alles weet als het gaat over internetondernemen, maar daarnaast ook het hele systeem weten te automatiseren. Dus als je nieuwsgierig bent van ja, wat is internetondernemen precies en automatiseren, wat betekent dat? Dan zou ik zeker gaan kijken naar dit interview, want uh, ja, ik denk dat het weer heel leerzaam is en dat er de nodige tips ook in zitten. Dus nou, in deel 1 gaan we het dus hebben over Kavit zelf en wat hij doet. Uh, ja, laat vooral weer je comments achter hier onder deze video natuurlijk. Of uh, ga naar de Facebookpagina My Search For Me. En uh, heel veel klein kijkplezier. Okay, Kavit, thank you so much for being here today. I'm quite excited about um, your journey and to find out more about who you are as a person. So, uh, but of course, the audience doesn't really know much about you. So uh, perhaps we can start with who are you and what do you do? Great, great. Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me. Thank you for bringing me to your audience. I hope that in the next um, few moments we talk together that we can share some value that will really help them and make this useful for them. So I'll do my best about that. Um, I, I guess I'm a musician first, so I started to learn an instrument called the tabla, okay. uh, and I started from a young age. It's a North Indian drum, so for those that don't know, uh, just do a quick Google on uh, tabla, T-A-B-L-A, okay. and it's like the bongos, mm -hmm. but it's, so it's two separate instruments, and they look very different, both of them, and you play them with the fingers as opposed to the palms, so it's actually known in the percussion world as the most difficult percussion instrument to, pay, to okay. play. If you can play the tabla, you should be able to put your hand to any other hand drum that exists in the world. Wow. So I've been learning that for 15 plus years yeah. and uh, at around the year 2000 I decided that really one of the things that I wanted to do was to play that professionally. I wanted to be able to play, growing up in, uh, initially I grew up in, I was born in London but I grew up in Lagos, Nigeria, okay. in Africa oh, wow. and uh, I lived there for 11 years and after 11 years I came back to London. Yeah. I've lived the rest of my life in London, um, but when I was in Lagos I went to uh, the American International School, which yeah. sort of explains the little twang in my accent, because <laughs> people might say that. Why do it's I have this yeah, mixed, uh, yeah. Um, unknown accent, where is he from? Yeah. But um, my background is that I'm uh, born to Indian parents, mm -hmm. although my parents are born in Africa, their parents are born in India. Okay. So again, I'm a bit of a mixed creature yeah. in that form. Um, but the, the, I, I went to university, I studied genetics, so I have a science background from yeah. that perspective. Uh, but I didn't pursue that as a career, I really wanted to make music the thing that I wanted to do. Okay. And uh, it was very difficult for me, playing an Indian instrument with very little confidence at the time, to say that I want to mix Asian Eastern music with Western music, pop, jazz, R&B, blues. I didn't want to play the typical Indian instrument with Indian music, which at the time everybody was doing. Well, yeah. that's what you're used to, because for centuries that's what people have done. But living in this country, growing up listening to pop, jazz, R&B, uh, hip-hop, uh, garage music, this, I wanted to mix both of those two things. Okay, so you wanted to combine yeah. the worlds. Yeah, and it was very difficult initially, because so many people would... In, in the music industry, if you don't get paid, then you're not going to play. Because, first of all, 
you're struggling to make money, and if you're not struggling to make money because you have another job, then you're struggling for time. Yeah. And even though you, most musicians want to make music and make music their dream job and make it their life, they have to keep one or two jobs in order to make money and do this thing on the side. Yeah. It's so a it's a really starving mentality, it's a very struggling mentality, um, and it was very difficult to find people. Yeah. Anyway, things got a little bit easier, I hustled for a while, I took, I took the time to I searched for musicians, I found some, I practiced, we gigged a lot. Uh, within the next two, three years at that point, I ended up playing with some um, famous people. Very recently, I played a few years ago, I played with uh, Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin okay. uh, at the Royal wow. Albert Hall. Yeah, I've been able to travel around the UK and play quite a bit. So that was all very good, but at the same time, a lot of my musician friends who also were struggling uh, were asking, how was I getting those gigs? How was I securing uh, recording opportunities to play on CDs, mm -hmm. and how was I making money therefore as a musician? Yeah. And of course they're your friends, so you'll get together for a drink and you'll share with them some ideas and this is what I'm doing, this is the strategy I'm using, yeah. uh, this is how I found these people, these are the websites I'm on, this is what I'm writing on the websites, here's how I built a MySpace profile. I would tell them all of these things. And then I realized that I wanted to play music, but I was spending most of my time talking to them about this is what to do, and this is how to do it. Yeah. And the world conspires in beautiful ways, I think, and uh, so many synchronicities end up at the same time. And uh, I have a friend at that time who was writing ebooks mm -hmm. on health and uh, how to cure diseases naturally. Okay. And he was putting them online and he was generating some sales from them, people were buying them. And I thought, well, if he's doing that, I have a similar pool of knowledge, not health, but music related. Yeah. And I could do the same thing. So I sat down and decided that I was going to take all the tips that I had about marketing and put them into a Word document. And I sat and I remember writing for three days on this, you know, like 12, 18 hour days. Wow. Uh, three days writing my first ever piece in a Word document. And it was really simple. I literally called it the 49 tips for promoting your music on the internet. Okay. And this was 2005. Uh, so I published this first book online, it was literally just a Word document. People could go and download it. I, I went to the library, I bought all these book. I borrowed all these books about uh, how to set up a website, what to put on the website, how to write all those things, and uh, I put up the web page. And on the web page, I said, "Here's the book. Download it. It's free." Yeah. But I didn't know how to charge for the book, and nor did I, nor had I learned how to do that at that point. Okay. But I put this website, and I went to all these friends that said, "Here, I want to learn this." I said, "Look, just read the book because it's on there. It's 49 tips. You can take all those tips and apply it." So I went to music forums online, I went to, my MySpace had grown quite massively, MySpace is like pretty much dead right now, but yeah. I went yeah. to that, that whole platform and I said here's the website and a lot, a lot of people went to get it. Yeah. And it was great. And as I continued my learning I realized that I could build a community, a newsletter of these people. Mm -hmm. Just the way I had with MySpace in my music career, I could build a newsletter of musicians. Because yeah. that was my audience. Yeah. So I naturally happened. fell into this first thing which became my first business. Okay. I wrote five books within a few months, one about how to triple your gigs, uh, one was about how to sell your CDs online, yeah. one was about how to do social media marketing, one was about how to be financially independent as a musician, and I, these are all very short books, like 10 to 30 pages of Word documents, but I would put yeah. them online and I learned about PayPal, and I created a PayPal button, I put in the newsletter and within six months I had now a little website with, which was capturing people for what I call the Musicians Development Newsletter okay. and these five books selling. Yeah. And each book was generating on average three sales per month. Okay. Um, sorry, three sales per day. So okay. that's 15 sales per day and of course if you sell that at $20 a piece that's more, music, more money than I ever made as a musician in a wow. week. Uh, and it was very exciting because I thought well I'm now being able to do two things that I like. Um, so on the one side, the music, the music side. exactly, and the other side is the is sharing the books. knowledge. Yeah, 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 sharing knowledge. And so, I realized over time, and this business ran for five years, and within that five years, I created uh, the ebooks. I then took the knowledge from the ebooks and created CDs. I continued to do my own business studies, my own marketing studies from stuff that I read. Now I read a huge amount. I probably read. There's times that I read, you know, uh, a book a month. There's times that I read a book a week. Wow. Uh, and that's it's been that's been a habit for mine for several years now. Yeah, I'm very fortunate that I've uh, been brought up to want to read uh, because I've got all my learning from that. Yeah. Like a huge amount of my learning has come from picking up book after book and taking insights and, and leaving the book. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, applying those insights. And okay. I think that uh, it makes a huge difference that you can you can read information and not retain it, and you can read information and and and, and retain it and then use something with it. Yeah. So, 
Um, in the five years, we took the I took the books and made them CDs, made them DVDs, made them membership sites, made them workshops, all for teaching people three things, teaching musicians three things. How do I get more sales? Yeah. How do I grow my exposure? And how do I get more gigs? Yeah. And if you do all these three things, how can you then quit your day job? Because musicians want to be able to do music okay. full time. So that's what's really your That was the purpose for that business, yeah. yeah. Like to help a musician quit the day job. And we had some great success stories within five years. We generated some good revenue and we built a mailing list of 120,000 musicians. Wow. Um, to, they received the newsletters every day. The whole sequences of marketing were automated. I learned how to automate the email sequences. People were getting, you know, based on the, their interests. If they were drummers, they would get drummer-related emails. If they were yeah. guitarists, they would get guitarist-related emails. So really but, yeah, but it wasn't to teach the instrument. It was to teach the marketing and the business tactics for a musician. Yeah. Because most musicians, as I said, they're all living the starring mentality. And it's unfortunate, and I think that it's slightly changing, but it's unfortunate. Social media has made it a lot more accessible for people to build their followings. You know, nowadays we see YouTube superstars, and we see uh, yeah. people that build massive profiles on Facebook and become found by record labels and then signed. Yeah. Uh, but it takes years and years of struggle. It's not an overnight thing. It's, it's dedication to the craft, dedication to the art, which I think is what mastery is made of. Yeah. So that's how I got into that. And I have a friend, his name is uh, Derek Sibbers. He started a company many, many years ago now called CD Baby, probably about 15, 20 years ago, maybe 15 years ago now, CD Baby, uh, and it's in Portland, Oregon in the United States. Mm -hmm. And he started this because he was an independent musician, but he wanted to know how he could uh, sell his own CDs online without having a record label. Okay. And soon his friends wanted, them, wanted him to sell their CDs as well. Yeah. That CD Baby became the massive CD Baby it is today, which is selling millions of CDs for independent musicians. Yeah. After 10 years of running it, he said, what if I could travel the entire world and not touch my business? And if I came back and it made the same amount of money, then I know that I've got a real business. Yeah. And uh, he did that, he succeeded, and then he sold the business for 20 million plus, you know, wow. as a result. Yeah. So, and moved on to his next few ventures. So I think that was very inspiring for me, and I decided that I could do the same traveling, because I wanted to build a business to be able to travel. So I could travel as well, and see what happens. And fortunately, everything worked out. And that's when I realized that this has been a great business, but there's more that I can do in my life. Like, there's more to, to, to what I have to share than just uh, specific advice for musicians. Yeah. Because the things that I've learned, and the things that I've developed, and the systems and structures that I've enhanced, can be used for anybody who wants to start a business. Yeah. Like they can emulate what has been done and do it for their own ideas. Yeah. And that's when uh, I started to do conference speaking uh, to wow. businesses. And uh, around the, around 2011, I, was, I think I spoke at five or six conferences. From 2011 to 2013, I went to Sydney about seven times to give a presentation or two at conferences twice a year. Okay. Um, and I would teach people specifically about how to automate their business yeah. and how to do so using social media. Yeah. Uh, and how to do so using email marketing and how to use email marketing to drive people's behaviors so that they know uh, you like you know if you I don't know if you're familiar with Amazon but when you buy an yeah. Amazon Amazon will only send you stuff related to what you bought yeah. they don't say, like if you buy books they don't send you kitchen related or or, or home related products no. if you buy home related products they don't sell you clothing and shoes and stuff yeah. they give you exactly what it is that you're looking for yeah. anybody can do that like it doesn't have to be a huge corporation, but anybody in a business can listen to their audience. And when you really start to listen to their audience and find out what, what's interesting for them, yeah. find out what's hurting them. Like something's hurting them, which is why they want your product and yeah. service. There's it, a need. There's stuff. absolutely a need for that. Yeah. And so if you can listen to those ideas and find where that need is, uh, using surveys, using interviews, and then drive people down the right route yeah. and automate it so that 80% of your time is freed up. Wow. That's what I decided to become about. Yeah. And so for the last four years, we've been running a service, three and a half years, we've been running a service called the Automated Business System. Yeah. And the Automated Business System, as part of my current company, is a 12-month process that uh, anybody with a good idea, anybody with a service-related idea generally, a product-related idea, mm -hmm. that uh, wants to develop a business online, we take them through the entire process of strategy. Yeah. Uh, so what is the right strategy for that business online? And then how do we automate it? Who do we serve? How do we serve them? How do we do it in the most effective way to get the most number of sales? Mm -hmm. Our goal is usually to get that business to produce a hundred thousand dollars, pounds, euros in the first year. Okay. Uh, and Big then, yeah. yeah, and then not only do we do the strategy, but we do all the work for them. So all the implementation, 
the web design, the web development, the graphic design, the email writing, the automation, the software setup, the system setup, wow. everything. So all they have to do then is learn how to do the marketing. Yeah. And we have a marketing coach that works with them to teach them how to do the marketing for about a year uh, so that they're building their entire business for that period of time. Wow. That's what I'm doing right now. I think it's really Very exciting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> so your question was, it was about uh, who am I and what is my story yeah. and uh, that was quite long but I hope yeah, that helps. Yeah. No, but it's <laughs> excellent and uh, it's nice to hear that it all started with one passion, your passion for music and what you were doing and then slowly by sharing your experience, the information that you had gathered, you could share that with your friends and with other people and you found out that there is so much more possible. And uh, the struggle that you explained about music musicians in general that uh, they don't have to struggle, they can do what they love and in the same time earn money. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think it's not just musicians though. I mean, I, I know that from yeah. first-hand experience, yeah. but I think that every creative business, and it could be life coaches, like the, the, the way I look at life coaches or, or coaches in general is that yeah. I, there are great coaching schools that teach you how to become a coach, but there's no set space and no direct transition for somebody to go to, as a coach to learn how to build a business. Mm -hmm. So what you're taught in coaching school is uh, here are the procedures for becoming a better coach. Yeah. Here are the exercises that you need to be able to know to coach somebody through a specific journey or tactic or, or hurdle, obstacle. Uh, whether that's life coaching, business coaching, health coaching, wellness coaching, could be any of these spectrums. Yeah. But nobody really shares how to build their business. And so I would, I'm saying this because now in this current business, I would say that 50% of the clients we get are people who are in this kind of service area. Coaches, consultants, trainers, speakers, yeah. who are trading their hour for a small amount of money. Like mm -hmm. they're charging for 45 minutes of a coaching session, they might charge $100 or 100 euros. Or... Um, for, for a month they might charge 300 but you're still giving three hours worth of work for $300. Yeah. yeah. And I think there's ways to leverage that where you can take the, the reason you became a coach, anybody, the reason they became a coach was to make a difference. Yeah. What if you make a difference in that way but with many people at the same time? Imagine. So a lot of the people that we work with have want to create group coaching programs. They want to uh, package their ideas and their processes into like five weeks, six weeks, eight weeks so that a customer would sign up for 500, 1,000, 2,000 dollars, uh, receive weekly video training, and then a group session with the coach. Yeah. And now that coach is making a lot more money, but also having a bigger impact because they're reaching a lot of people. Yeah. So that starving mentality or struggle mentality is the same even for coaches, as an example. Yeah, no, excellent example. And I also know a lot of people who want, indeed, to make a difference by being a coach or doing something similar to that. Yeah. But they all still exchange, like you say, their time for money. And yeah. I think that's like the general standard because we don't really see what else is possible, we don't really believe it or we don't know the right examples. But it's good to hear that there are ways indeed to do that and uh, I can imagine when you have the experts who really yeah, have all the valuable information in order to create that, uh, they can save you a lot of time and, Absolutely. and money of course Absolutely. to uh, have that dream and indeed have a bigger impact. Yeah, so that's, because uh, a yeah. lot of people spend so much time learning how to do graphic design learning how to do web development, spending hours putting together a website. Yeah. Uh, is my writing good enough? Uh, have I put together the right copy? Are yeah. my questions perfect enough? Um, is my blog post good enough? That, there's that fear mm. before they hit publish on WordPress or whatever they're using. Yeah. Um, there's that fear before uh, opening their Facebook page and sharing all this information. Yeah. There's that worry about going on camera because they don't know whether what they're saying is right or how they're looking at it, whether they're being perceived. Yeah. I say to these people that the world is moving so fast, the world is, the social media is changing so fast, every time you refresh your news feed, it's different, it it's completely different, yeah. and what, what you've done once is not going to impact you later on, as long as you keep, I mean, if you do the same mistake every time, there's, it's not going to happen, yeah. but the idea is that you do, a, you do a blog post, you do a video, you, you release your product and service, and you see what people say and then you improve it yeah. each time. Yeah. And it's that idea of getting out of your own head. I did a Facebook video just very recently and I said, um, the, there's a novelist, her name is Anne Lamott, and she talks about this idea of uh, getting out of your own head. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, two types of speakers playing loud in your head right now. Yeah. One side on the left is telling you that you're the best, you're the greatest, you're so good at what you're doing, you're amazing, you have so much confidence, you're a 
clarity and the courage that you're taking is taking you to feel certain about what you're doing. Yeah. It makes you feel really good. Mm -hmm. uh, and you believe in yourself before even anyone has told you that you're good or bad. Yeah. Um, and then the other side of you is that you're not so good. You're not that great. Mm. You, what you're putting out isn't very good. Yeah. I don't think you should put this out because there are way more qualified people out there than you. All the little doubts. Yeah, all that yeah. self-doubt, all that self sabotage that happens yeah and we're spending all of our energy having that fight instead of putting our energy into the work that we want to do yeah and so uh, changing the focus yeah and there's a lot of people that struggle with that so yeah based on what you're saying about coaches and uh, people that you know who, who maybe are in that boat i think that's useful yeah yeah indeed now excellent wow what a gaaf eerste gedeelte van het interview met kavit ik zelf, toen ik dat interview had met Kavit, ik liep echt te stuiteren en ik was vol met energie. En ik dacht van, wauw, wat is deze materie gaaf. En ja, er ging toch wel een soort een wereldje van me open. Ook al uh, was ik bekend met internet ondernemen en e-books en dat soort dingen. Maar ja, de, de manier waarop Kavit het uitlegde, hoe hij het heeft opgebouwd en echt een geautomatiseerd systeem heeft opgezet. Dat vond ik echt wel heel erg fascinerend. Dus uh, nou ja, heel erg gaaf. Dus ik ben ook heel erg benieuwd wat jij ervan vond. Laat vooral je comments even achter uh, uh, onder deze video. Of uh, ga naar de Facebookpagina My Search For Me. En laat daarachter wat jij vond van het interview met Kavit. Het eerste gedeelte natuurlijk. Um, ja, in deel 2 dan kun je nog veel meer waardevolle informatie verwachten. Nou, eigenlijk heb ik hem nog maar één vraag kunnen stellen. En dat is wie ben je en wat doe je? En dat was al een heel verhaal. Um, in het tweede deel gaan we het hebben over de hindernissen als ondernemer, ja, waar hij mee te maken heeft gehad en nog steeds soms mee te maken heeft. En hij noemde onder andere gebrek aan duidelijkheid, aan helderheid en ook waarom dat zo belangrijk is. Um, daarnaast hebben we het nog over, uh, ik moet even spieken, Entrepreneur Success Framework. Um, dat, dat ligt hij toe wat dat is, wat dat betekent. En dat heeft ook te maken met um, ja, gebrek aan helderheid. Um, ja, dat, dat je echt helderheid nodig hebt om moed te hebben om stappen te kunnen ondernemen en nou ja, waar dat nog veel meer naartoe kan leiden. Dus ook weer een heel waardevol gedeelte. Ik zal zeker ook kijken naar deel 2. Mocht je deel 1 hebben gemist, ga vooral nog even terug, want ja, het is echt heel erg nuttig en inspirerend. En anders, heel veel kijkplezier, geniet van deel 2.